In the El Chapo trial, the son of El Chapo's partner provided more shocking testimony during his second day on the stand. Vicente Zambada told the court 99% of the Sinaloa cartel's weapons came from the U.S. as semi-automatic AK-47s. They were turned into automatic rifles once they crossed the border. He also told the court that El Chapo and his father, Ishmael, helped him in leaving the cartel by contacting the DEA in the hope he would provide information against the cartel's enemies. CBS News legal analyst Ricky Kleeman joins me now to talk about this. So, Ricky, there was a lot to get through in these two days of testimony. Let's start with Zimbabwe's relationship with the DEA. Let's break down what he said and what you believe his credibility on the stand is. Well, I think it's very difficult for uh, any jury uh, in the United States of America to really understand the inner workings of real criminals in drug trafficking along with the U.S. government's agents from the Drug Enforcement Administration. We always think that the agents go out and get the bad guys. They arrest them and then they have them held over for prosecution. We don't think of them being in partnership. And according to the testimony of this witness, which I think he may be the most powerful witness on the stand in terms of the detail, I mean, he was the heir apparent to the Sinaloa drug cartel. He was the person who was going to run the cartel. And his decision to get out of the Sinaloa drug cartel, he wanted, he says, to leave the drug business. Well, it's like the mafia, Vlad. You know, always in, never out. You can't leave. But according to his testimony, well, he had a conversation with El Chapo. Mm. And El Chapo said to him, he says, that I can get in touch with the DEA and put you together and um, maybe they'll work it out for you. And lo and behold, in truth, two years later, um, this is a person who was arrested in Mexico City. He is then extradited to Chicago, which was the base of operations for uh, the dispersal of drugs in the U.S. from the drug cartel. And he winds up cooperating with the DEA under the protection uh, of the U.S. government. Um, it, it's really a fantastic tale, it, but it's true. Yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's all true. <laughs> and the defense started their cross-examination, and it seemed as if they were trying to pin the cartel on Vicente's father. How did he respond? Well, the, the, one of the questions that you and I have dealt with since the beginning of this trial is who runs the Sinaloa? A drug right. cartel. Is it El Chapo, the defendant on trial, or is it El Mayo, this witness's father, who is still at large and apparently still running the cartel? Well, some of this testimony made it sound like they were in partnership. Um, that this really was a give and take between El Mayo and El Chapo and they ran the cartel and this witness was going to be then the successor. One of the things that, um, that we look at when we, term, when we deal with the issue of credibility of this witness is what does he say that we can corroborate? Well, he has a tale that is just fantastic. I mean, in the sense of how would anyone believe this is true? And that's that he was, he says, uh, taken out of jail or wherever he was being held and brought by American agents to a place where he could accept a call or make a call to his father, mm. who is a fugitive. But somehow <laughs> that all happened, and his, he was supposed to ask his father to come in. Well, it's easy enough to corroborate that call. You call the agents to the witness in. Are you kidding me that <laughs> this is the kind of treatment that he got? Yeah. So I do think that it's distasteful to those of us who would like to believe that the Drug Enforcement Administration is not playing footsie with the Sinaloa drug cartel. But it, all you have to do is really look at the truth. Mm. And the truth can be found in many news accounts, um, as well as looking at fiction that is based on truth, whether, whether you look at uh, narcos on TV, whether you read cartel. Um, but Your favorite all, book. My favorite book. <laughs> but all of this comes back to the fact that in order for these drug cartels to operate at the level they did, they had to have cooperation at various levels of law enforcement, both in the United States and Mexico. And this judge is trying as best he can to keep out a lot of evidence that would show the U.S. involvement. And what do you make of that, that they, there's been a demand for more transparency? 
Well, I'm uh, in my in my seat here um, uh, as a legal analyst for CBS News. Of course, I want more transparency. If I'm the defense. I want more transparency because so much of this case is filed on motions under seal. The reporters who are at the courthouse every day are really just going out of their minds. They can't find out what's going on. And if they can't find out what's going on, neither can any of the rest of us. If I put myself in the seat of the prosecutor, I'm very happy. Mm. To be continued, always great to have you on this as well. Ricky, thank you very much. Thank you.